Hi guys, it's Beth here from West London English School. Today we are going to be having a look at reading part C of the OET exam. Hopefully you've already watched the videos uh, with Harmi um, on reading part A and reading part B. So reading part A, as you probably know, is 15 minutes and that is one paper. Part B and part C go together in paper two. Um, the <sighs> We want you to spend, really, ideally, on, on part B, about 10 minutes. That means, because the whole paper is 45 minutes, that you have about 30, 35 minutes to spend on reading part C. Now, at part C, you get two reading extracts. They both have eight multiple choice questions in each. Um, and there are some different kind of techniques that you can employ. So um, things like looking for the writer's opinion uh, and inference. And there's some different strategies that you, you can use in the exam to um, try and get the right answers in the, in the right amount of time because you don't have uh, that long in the exam. Um, it goes by really quickly. So uh, yeah, we're going to have a look at, at some of those today. Um, so let's um, begin in this video we are going to have a look at uh, one extract um, and we're going to go over each of the questions in the extract ideally you will need a pen and some paper so um, pause the video go and get those now and then we'll begin okay so you can see here our first question and the paragraph which corresponds to the question. Now in part C, it will always um, say something like in the first paragraph, so you know where to look. If it doesn't say this, the next bit will um, lead on. So for example, question two will probably be in paragraph two. So I'm going to give you two minutes to read the question, read the paragraph and see if you can find the answer. Okay, so let's have a look at the question because we need to kind of deconstruct that and make sure that we really understand the question. So we can see the writer uses Eve Van Korter's words. So we need to look for what she actually said and that would be the quotation marks at the bottom. So if we read what she says, why is the writer using these words? And to understand that, we also need to look at the paragraph before. So here she's saying millions of people suffer sleep problems. Um, 
a myriad of health burdens and then gives a list of those health burdens. And then we have the quote that is saying the same kind of thing in the studies we've done, every variable we measured was affected. Now, if we look at the, um, the options we have, it's really important to look at the verbs that we've got here. So, um, explain, reinforce, you've got to think reinforce, um, you know, it means that we are um, supporting a view, we're emphasizing something again, that's what that re means. Um, question, so someone's not quite sure about it, and describe. So our answer here, it's not A, it's not explaining the main causes of sleep deprivation because there's nothing actually here about the causes of why people are sleep deprived. If we look at option C, question some research findings. Now the only thing that's mentioned about the research findings um, is the quote where it says, in the studies we've done, almost every variable we measured was affected. There's nothing there where she's saying, you know, I'm not sure about this. There's no questioning there with it. So it can't be C. And looking at D, um, describe the challenges involved in sleep deprivation research. Well, again, the only research that is mentioned um, is her quote talking about the studies they've done and she isn't describing the challenges involved. There's nothing there about the difficulties that they face. So it can't be D. Our answer has to be B. Reinforce a view. Like we said before, that first section, that those first two sentences, they are describing um, millions of people suffer health burdens and then the quote is saying in the studies we've done we've noticed there's a lot of health burdens with sleep deprivation so B has to be our answer. Let's have a look at question two the same thing I'm going to give you two minutes um, so have a read and here comes the timer. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the answers here. So if we have a look at C, researchers tend to confirm earlier ideas about its purpose. Now, in this case, we're going to look for synonyms. That means words that are similar or have the same meaning. And we can see here that we've got earlier and we've got two decades ago. 
So obviously two decades ago is referring to the past, referring to earlier. Um, and those ideas are that sleep was performed by the brain in the interest of the brain. Now, what we need to make sure is that you understand um, why C is the answer here. So we match the earlier ideas um, ab about the performance of the brain, about its purpose. But we need to make sure that that first section, researchers have tended to confirm, we we've got to make sure that that is correct. So if we look through this paragraph, we can see this line after interest of the brain. It says that that wasn't a fully elaborated theory, but it wasn't wrong. So what we are getting at here is that the, the theory before it, it wasn't complete, but it wasn't wrong. And the studies that we have now, the numerous recent studies, have shown the same thing that was shown two decades ago. And that is why it needs to be C. Let's have a look at the other answers and why they are not correct. So a scientific opinion about its function has changed in recent years. Well, again, we can see the two decades ago is the past and the numerous recent studies is the present. But actually, they are talking about the same thing. There is no change, so it can't be the answer. If we look at B, there is now more controversy about it than in the past. Well, if we have a read through this paragraph, there's nothing there actually about a uh, controversy. There's nothing there about uh, differing opinions, um, especially when we're comparing um, the past and the present. The only thing that's said is that it wasn't a fully elaborated theory. And D, um, studies in the past formed the basis of current research. Well, um, you might want to go for this answer. There's a lot of stuff here that's going to make you think that this is the answer. But if we really focus on the wording of D, formed the basis, this means that the past research was the, the beginning of the research of, the, of, of what's being researched now. And that isn't mentioned at all. It does talk about the past and it does talk about now, but it doesn't actually uh, show a, a relationship or um, any kind of connection between the two. So this is why uh, it does need to be C. C is more of a correct answer than D. And um, this is something in OET that uh, can be, um, is a little bit controversial because sometimes you look at the answer and you think, yeah, that, that must be it. And what you then have to do is actually go through the other answers and say, why is it not that answer? Why is it this? Um, and, and that's what's happened in this case. C is just a better answer than D. It's just those words in D formed the basis that are just not right. Let's have a look at question three. Again, you've got two minutes.
Okay, so let's look at the wording of the question. So we can see um, the word impressed. So we need to be looking in here for um, a similar word, something that shows that um, Bob was, was impressed. And um, I would go straight for this word cleverly. So Bob McCarley has a quote in here, quotation marks. So we're going to look for that. And he says, the brain has cleverly designed a two-stage defense. Now, the use of the adverb cleverly here is showing that something is, a, is impressive, is effective. So this is the area that we need to look in to find the answer. And so that we know what what they're talking about where they say cleverly designed we need to read above it um, so we've got here um, what Macaulay discovered and if we have a look that has to be answer C because Macaulay is saying as adenosine levels rise so do concentrations of adenosine receptors so this is two things happening at the same time. And we know that Bob was impressed because his quote is, the brain has cleverly designed a two-stage defense. That two-stage defense is what's in the previous sentence with adenosine levels rise and so do concentrations of adenosine receptors. Now this is a little bit of um, language where you really need to understand the vocabulary. And here we've got so do. And this so do means at the same time. So as adenosine levels rise, at the same time, so do concentrations of adenosine receptors. Simultaneous means at the same time. So we can match those up. Um, and that way, what we've done with this question is we have looked at the the question what particularly impressed and then we've gone through that we've found bob's quote we've looked at what he was talking about and what impressed him now i want us to try a, um, a different technique for question four what i would like you to do is read the question and then i want you to read the paragraph and then I want you to read the answers. Now, by doing it this way, reading the question and then reading the paragraph, you're not going to be distracted by the answers because what they do is they put distractors in on purpose to try and confuse you. So we're gonna try and avoid this altogether. We just read the question, try and find the answer in the paragraph and then have a look at the answer options. So let's try that now with question four.
Okay, so let's have a look at the answers for question four. Now, because in the question it's saying what idea is emphasized by the phrase, obviously we need to look in the paragraph for that phrase. So that is what I have highlighted here at the bottom. And where it says, but adenosine levels are by no means the be all and end all, we have to think about that beginning word, but, because this is showing that there is a contrast and we don't know what what it's contrasting with so that means that we need to look above the word but and we need to find uh, what the contrast is here so we can see here this sentence highlighted adenosine may underlie some of the cognitive deficits that result from sleep loss the sentence after that talks about what Macaulay and colleagues found um, about the inf infusing the adenosine, da, 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 da. This sentence is just supporting the previous one. It's just adding a little bit um, more to, to support it, but it's not really giving us anything new. So if we read these two sentences highlighted together, adenosine may underlie some of the cognitive deficits that result from sleep loss, but Adenosine levels are by no means the be-all and end-all of sleep deprivation's effects on the brain or the body. So, we then need to have a look through the options of the answers. If we have a look at A, sleep deprivation has consequences beyond its impact on adenosine levels. Now, this needs to be our answer. Because what we can see in the first sentence highlighted is talking about adenosine, the impact that it has, for example, cognitive deficits because of sleep loss. Sleep loss and sleep deprivation are synonyms. So the consequences of sleep deprivation include things like cognitive deficits. And this is why with the last line, it's saying that these adenosine levels, it, it's not everything, it's not the be all and end all, um, because we know that there are other effects, like the, the cognitive deficits. Okay, let's do the same thing with question five. So I want you to read the question first, then read the paragraph, and then see if you can find the answer. If we, um, if we have a look at the wording in the question, we can see significance and findings. 
So we don't just want to know the, the findings, the results of the experiment. We want to know what was so significant, what was so prominent about, about these findings. And in the paragraph, the first section, where it says over a centre of sleep research, all of this highlighted section is just describing um, research and what they did for the research. It's not describing any findings, there are no results, it just um, explains what Van Corter did um, over, over, over time for the research. Um, so we know that the answer is not going to be in here. If we have a look at the next part, we can see a lot of uh, synonyms with answer D. So the extent of the contrast. Now remember, we're looking for something significant about the findings. And what we have here is the wording striking differences. Now this is not just differences, this is striking. This is something big, it's something important, and it's something significant. And we can also see uh, some similar words, like we've got uh, metabolic states, and we have the word metabolism. And we've also got repeats, sleep, death, and recovery, and during sleep, death, and recovery. So reading through that sentence in the paragraph and looking at the options for the answers, it has to be D as the answer. Okay, um, let's have a go at question six. Um, again, I would like you to read the question, read the paragraph, and then see if you can find the answer. Okay, so again, um, the same thing as we had before, we have a word highlighted, in this case the word is it, so we need to find it in the paragraph, and we can see here that it says, this is because it degrades the energy molecule. So we want to look for the thing that degrades the energy molecule, what degrades the energy molecule, and where it says this is because, we don't know what this is either. What is this referring to? Again, we have to look above. We've got to look at the sentence before because the reason that these pronouns have been used is because they are referring back to something that has already been mentioned. So let's have a look at the previous sentence. Echoing Van Korter's results, Bashir has found evidence that enforced lack of sleep sends the brain into a catabolic or energy-consuming state. This is because it degrades. 
looking at the previous sentence where it says sends the brain into a catabolic or energy consuming state. So we want to know why is the brain sent into a catabolic state? And then the, we get the answer. This is because, so this is why it happens. So if we're looking before, we want to look at what sends the brain into this state. And we can see that it's enforced lack of sleep. So enforced lack of sleep sends the brain into a catabolic state. This, so the reason the brain is sent into the state is because it, because enforced lack of sleep degrades the energy molecule. So our answer there needs to be enforced lack of sleep. If we look at those two sentences together, we can see enforced lack of sleep degrades the energy molecule. Okay, we're going to try um, a different technique this time. What I would like you to do is not read the question and not read the answers. Um, for about one minute, I want you to really read the paragraph. Try to understand it as best as you can. So read the paragraph and then about a minute later, look at the question and look at the answers and see if that helps you find the answers any, any quicker. Okay, so um, again, looking at the question, we've uh, got this word surprised. So we need to find something that was unexpected in, in the findings, in the results of the research. If we look in the paragraph, we do have a section that says, which makes sense. So we know that it's not going to be there because we want something that surprised her, uh, not something that is, is normal or that makes sense. If we um, have a look at the this sentence highlighted here, we've got the word unexpected changes. And this is important. We've also got the word uh, signs of cellular aging that are unusual. So these are things that um, surprised her. And the quote that we have um, is very important because this is where we can find the, uh, the actual answer. So at the end, she said, it says, after 36 hours of sleep recovery, a period during which she, referring to Chiara, during which she expected normalcy to resume, those changes remained. So Chiara expected the normal, um, the normal levels to, to go to where they were before. She expected normalcy to resume, to happen again, but those changes remained. So this is what she is surprised about. 
So let's go through the answers and see if we can find that. So if we look at A, there was no reversal of a certain effect of sleep deprivation. Well, is that not what we just said? So there was no reversal. And this is the same as she expected normalcy to resume. So A has to be our answer. If we have a look at B, the cortical neurons of the mice underwent structural changes. Well, the mice do, the, their, their brains did undergo structural changes. Uh, we can see that in this sentence here, where it says in the USA found structural changes in the cortical neurons. However, um, this isn't something that seemed to surprise her. There's no quotes here um, from Chiara. There's nothing that shows that she was surprised by this. So don't get confused. Just because you see the same kind of language, you still got to make sure that you understand the sentence and the paragraph. If we look at C, there was evidence of an increased need for energy in the brains of mice. Well, again, like we said before, we've got this bit which makes sense as neurons need more energy to stay awake. So this isn't something that surprised her. This is something that she expected. So it can't be C. Finally, the neurological response only took a few hours to become apparent. Um, if we go through this paragraph, there is nothing here um, saying that the response only took a few hours. Um, and there's nothing there that, that talks about her being surprised at that because a few hours aren't even mentioned. I mean, a few would be maybe two, three, four hours. Um, so, so that can't be the answer. Okay, um, finally, we've got our last question here. So we've had a look at three different techniques. We've looked at reading the question, then reading the answers, and then reading the paragraph. We've also looked at reading the question, then reading the paragraph, and then going back to the answers to, um, to avoid being distracted. Um, and then finally, we've looked at just reading the paragraph and then going back to the questions and answers. So with this last question, I want you to do the technique that you think works best for you. You've had a bit of a practice with all the others. Um, so let's try this now. Just do whatever you think is best for you and we'll see if you can find the answer. So here we go. Okay, so 
in this uh, last question, we do need to use inference. Now, inference is where something is not said, it's not mentioned explicitly, it's not mentioned uh, very clearly. You have to almost use your common sense and your world knowledge around, it, around the, the idea to try and get the answer. Now, this doesn't mean uh, medical knowledge, it doesn't mean uh, knowledge as, as a nurse or, or a doctor. Um, it means knowledge of, of the world, common sense. So we're going to have to use this um, to, to look at what the answer is here. So again, let's look at the language in the question. It's so important that you read this and that you maybe even highlight any words that you think are important. So we've got the quote from Van Quarter, so we need to look for her quote. Again, look for the quotation marks, which we can see here at the bottom. And then it says is used to suggest that. So what is she suggesting? So she says, yeah, people like to define a clear pathway of action. With sleep deprivation, everything is affected and produces an effect. Okay. So if we go through these answers, we should be able to um, hopefully get rid of some of the answers and, um, and, and find the actual answer. So the goals of sleep deprivation research are sometimes unclear. Now, you might be tempted to um, match this. We see the word unclear and we see the words clear, a clear pathway. Um, but it's not really talking about the goals of the research being unclear. It's, um, it's talking about a pathway of action. So it's kind of more talking about helping people with the, with the health condition, with the health conditions that are, are caused by sleep deprivation. Um, if we look at B, it could be difficult to develop any treatment for sleep deprivation. Um, well, I would say that this this could be an answer, definitely. Um, it says, you know, it's difficult to develop treatment. Well, it would be, or it is difficult to develop treatment where everything that you measure is affected in the body because of sleep deprivation. So there are so many uh, symptoms that you have, so many problems you have because of sleep deprivation. So of course, then it would be difficult to develop treatment. So this is the answer if we are following inference. Um, let's look at C. Opinions about the best way to deal with sleep deprivation are divided. Um, this quote uh, is not mentioning this. It doesn't talk about differing opinions between scientists or, or between anyone about how to deal with sleep deprivation. It doesn't talk about differing, differing opinions. And D. There is still a great deal to be learnt. Well, this, um, I'm sure there is. There probably is a lot still to be learnt, but that's not actually mentioned here in the paragraph. Her quote is just saying that people want a clear pathway for treating health conditions or with the action. And with sleep de deprivation, there are so many symptoms and so many problems that it's very difficult to do this. Um, so the answer has to be B. Okay, so it's uh, really important that you remember in the exam you have to understand the paragraph. You can't just find a single sentence without reading around it. Remember those parts where we had um, the word it and you have to read above that to make sure that you have the right answer. It's not just the case of finding a synonym and thinking, oh yeah, that's the answer. You've got to understand everything around it in order to be able to get the correct answer. Yeah, this is something um, really important. You, you do have time in the exam. I mean, try and spend about, about two minutes on each question because uh, there's a lot to get through. But if you can't find the answer, just move on. Um, you can always come back to it at the end and you don't want to spend five minutes um, or just even three minutes, four minutes, five minutes trying to find the answer if you just don't know. Approach each question individually. Yeah, um, this goes without saying. Isolate the question and the paragraph and see if you can find the answer from that. Don't read the whole text 
and then try and find the answers. Think about every question as an individual. The question, the paragraph, the answers. And always work in that way, going back and forth. Um, use inference. Definitely, you need to read around the topic. This is why it's so important to think about maybe why these answers are incorrect. Because sometimes it's not clear why this answer is um, specifically the answer, but it might be clear that the others are just wrong. Um, and inference is also important, like we saw in the last question, where you just need to think about, well, what are they saying? Think outside the box. They're, they're not giving us an explicit, specific answer. Um, but by using what you know and, and kind of thinking around the subject, you should be able to find that answer. Um, and then finally, manage your time. Um, again, it's the same kind of thing as move on if you can't find the answer. Try and make sure you wear a watch in the exam. Um, try and spend uh, a couple of minutes on each question if you can. If you can't find it, move on and go back. Um, it is a big problem that, uh, that we find with OET candidates um, is that they spend in in the exam they spend too long on one question and they might um, do really well in the first extract and in the second extract they only have five minutes there's not enough time you've really got to manage your time well if you haven't um, seen our video about part b yet uh, for reading i would watch it there's um, lots of useful information on managing your time uh, in the exam for for part b um, and obviously because part B and part C are together, it's important that you understand the way that both of them work um, in, in terms of, of timing. So um, I hope that you have uh, enjoyed this lesson, and that you have maybe found a strategy or a tip that works for you. Keep practicing. There are sample papers online. We have our online courses. So wherever you are in the world, if you go to our website, you can join a course. We have them specifically for writing, specific courses for speaking. And we also have our different packages um, for every, every skill, every subtest in the exam. We, um, as PPP providers, we have um, made a lot of our own materials. So there will definitely be something new for you. Um, but yeah, keep practicing. If you're in London, come and visit us. Uh, we love seeing people to have a chat, uh, get to know you. We've got um, our OET courses um, live face to face in the classroom. So we have lots of options for you and we are able to advise you if you need any assistance. So uh, we have Facebook, we have Instagram. Um, subscribe to us, uh, like us, comment, give us your feedback um, and uh, good luck with the exam. Thanks.